hello, and welcome to Kingdom Connection with Jensen Franklin. In this weekly podcast, we hope that you have an encounter with God through inspired teaching and discover practical ways to help you live a life of purpose. If you enjoy the teaching ministry of Jensen Franklin and would like to enjoy more resources, devotionals, including our weekly updates, we hope you'll visit our website at jensenfranklin.org. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, verse 33. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Here it is. And great grace was upon them all. I want you all to read that last sentence of that. And great grace was upon them all. I believe that God wants to put on you and on your life and on your family and on your failure in 2018, great grace. Mistakes are the price we pay for a full life if we learn from those mistakes. The issue is not, are you going to be knocked down? The issue is if you're going to stay down. Someone said you have to take a licking and keep on ticking. The word is called resilience in a dictionary. Mistakes are the catalyst to the miraculous if you will put them in God's hands. Don't let mistakes destroy you. Heaven wants to make you. Hell wants to maim you. And both want to use your mistakes to do it. The adversity wants to mock and maim you for the rest of your life for the mistakes that you have made and you have made them. But God can transform you through your mistakes to be what he wants you to be. Mistakes should not maim us the rest of our life. Mistakes can become prison houses that hold you hostage. The enemy would love for for all of us who have made mistakes to live and be held hostage in a prison, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, by the mistakes that we have made. Mistakes can become informative. Mistakes can become revelatory. Adam's mistake brought a revelation about God that Adam never would have known without his mistake. Because if he looked at the only being that had made a mistake in the universe before Adam showed up was Lucifer, and God never gave him another chance. But when Adam and Eve failed, God said, I'm going to show you a side of me that you wouldn't have seen without your mistake. I'm a God of mercy. Great grace only comes after great mistakes. The greater the mistake, the greater God's grace comes to every one of us. I didn't come with any bad news today. If you're waiting on it, you ain't going to get it today. All I came with is great grace. Point number one of my little sermon here today is number one. You may have made a mistake, but you are not one. You got to let that sink down into your soul when the enemy's beating your brains out, telling you're trash, you're stupid, you're nothing. How could you be so dumb? How could you mess your life up so bad? You may have made a mistake, but you are not one. You may have failed, but you are not a failure. You may be down, but down is not your destiny. God still has a plan and a purpose and and a great thing that he's going to do because he's got great grace for great mistakes. Everybody give him a praise in the overflow. Wherever you are, give him a praise for great grace. You will experience a resurrection. You will come out of this. Mistakes can open a doorway of discovery, a portal of possibility that you would never discover had you not gone through the mistake. I'm not advocating go out and make mistakes so you can find out more about God's grace. I'm just telling you what the devil means to destroy you with and imprison you with and defeat you with and humiliate you with. God says, I can put great grace on your great mistakes. And they become a doorway of possibility, a portal, an opening to discovery. Your mistakes are not final. Your failure is not final. That's why 
Nahum said, rejoice not over me, O my enemies. You'll see me mess up, but don't you start throwing a party and start rejoicing over me, O my enemies. For when I fall, I will rise again. Though I sit in darkness, it's not forever. His light will find me again. Do not let failure become final in your life. It's not God's will. Hidden in every mistake is a portal, a possibility, a doorway of discovery. He does not want your mistake to be a prison. He wants it to be a pathway to a greater revelation of his grace. God will never define you by your mistakes. See, I just said something huge right there. People will, your critics will, your enemies will define you for the rest of your life by your mistakes. But your God will never define you by the worst mistake you ever. See, that's what people think. Oh, that. But God says, I, even I am he that blots out your transgressions to remember them no more. I'll never define you by your worst mistake. Never will God do that. Elder brother spirits will. You know, the only one to bring up the past of the prodigal son was the elder brother. The father never said a word about it. He just threw a coat on him and covered him up and brought him home. Said, let's throw a party. Get the musicians out. Get the instruments out. Play the drums. Let's dance. Let's, Let's have a party. And the elder brother sitting over there wanting to talk about the past. But God will never define you by your worst mistake. Don't join the devil's side. He's the accuser of the brothers. Don't define people when they fail and make a mistake by their mistake. You're joining the devil's side. Let's stop defining people by their mistakes. God will never define you by your worst moment. Mistakes and failures do have consequences. There's no doubt about it. But you're not supposed, they're not supposed to define your future. See, heaven wants to make you, hell wants to maim you. God, in order to conform us into his image, lets us fail because he lets us come to an end of ourself and our self-righteousness. The devil desires to crush you for your mistakes and make you feel unworthy and make you feel worthless when in reality you are a precious child of God right now. God knows everything about you, every mistake you've made. And if you've repented of that mistake, God says you're a precious child of God. But Satan wants to make you feel totally worthless. I'm saying to you today that mistakes make you feel like you're stupid. You ever done something you just felt, how could I be so stupid to say that, to do that? What an idiot. And you just beat yourself up. Abraham made a terrible mistake. Lied about his wife. He made another mistake when he slept with a woman that wasn't his wife. That's terrible. God never brought it up. Not one time. And even though he made mistakes, God said, go on, move on. I'm still going to make you the father of faith. I know you messed up, but I'm not defining you by your mistake. You made a mistake, but you're not a mistake. And I'm going to use you for my glory. God uses mistakes to take us beyond. Elijah called down fire from heaven, outran the horses of Ahab, did amazing miracles. But then he, he, he heard a, 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 that Jezebel wanted to kill him and he ran and fled and hid in a cave, trembling in fear. He made a mistake after all that good stuff. We, how is it a man can do a million things right and, and, and one thing wrong and we define him by the one thing wrong and forget all the good stuff that he did? We're just people. 
and he's sitting in that cave. And I love the fact that when he's sitting in that cave, feeling bad about the mistake that he's made, God doesn't show up and say, you sure messed up. God never brings it up, but he comes in a still small voice and he says, you're still my servant. I've still chosen you. I've still called you. I still have a plan for your life. God never brought up his failure and God isn't bringing up your failure. He wants you to move beyond your mistakes into his great grace. Jacob lied, deceived the people that we make almost deities out of in the Bible. David committed adultery. He really did. He killed people. He did horrible things. The point is God uses people who make mistakes. God said, you're a scam artist, you're a liar, you're a deceiver, Jacob. You've done about all the bad things you can do. You're a liar, you're a luster, you're a loser. But I'm going to make you a prince. Rename you. Your name will no longer be Jacob, but you're going to become Israel, which means a prince with God. And I'm going to give you power with God and favor with men. I love the fact that Peter really messed up. He lied and cussed and denied Jesus Christ three times. And Jesus, when he showed up to him, never said when he, when he showed up in his resurrection body and cooked him a restoration meal, Jesus didn't look at him and say, give me the keys back. You know, he gave G- I give you, Peter, the keys to the kingdom. Well, just because you've messed up and made a mistake, Jesus never said, give me the keys back. Jesus is saying to you, I haven't changed my mind about you. I haven't changed my mind about your purpose and your destiny. I'm telling you that I, I knew you would mess up, but I put great grace on great mistakes. If you'll just look to me, I'll never give up on you. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody needs to hear this today. Your mistakes are not final. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise if you believe it. Mm. God will use you anyway. Turn to, your, turn to your neighbor and say, don't let your mistakes hold you hostage. No, you weren't perfect. No, you haven't done everything right. No, you, yes, you could have done something better. If you don't watch it, those mistakes will hold you hostage. And you can't even praise the Lord. You're under such condemnation that God's not putting on you. The devil's putting it on you. God will use you anyway. I made so many mistakes. It's not funny. You have no idea how many mistakes I've made as pastor of this church. Ridiculous, stupid stuff. But God never came to me and said, give me the keys back. You're not pastor anymore. People would have had a few try to destroy me. People would have. But God says, no, I gave you what I gave you. I like you. I love you. I'm for you. Saying that about you. Psalms 38 verse 16 said, David said, when my foot slips, he didn't say if all you, all you real holy five people out there. He said, when my foot slips, not if my foot slips, you're going to slip. You're going to slip and say something you shouldn't, do something you shouldn't. You're going to make a mistake. But I love what he goes on to say. He talks about how the, his enemies sit back, really wanted to pounce on him. But he says in verse 18, I will declare my iniquity. You know what declare means? Open your mouth and tell God I made a mistake. And you move from admission to remission. If leukemia is in remission, it means it's losing its power, going down, 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 down. And when you, when you, when you come with admission, I made a mistake, then suddenly that mistake goes into remission. You, you go from declaration to restoration. You go from the... De- 